it's relative, around 90 degrees. You see the crater to the left. This is Rome. Approximately 4 in the morning. This indicates to me that the uh, planets, the dwarf Nibiru, very close. When we started taking this uh, about 60 hours ago, the uh, white impact crater was straight down. This suggests that the white crater is pointing towards a balance point, perhaps, between the, the sun, the earth and the Nibiru, which would be the only thing that would cause the moon to rotate. Now, uh, at the centre of the moon is a uh, large iron core, which is uh, 40 miles, it's about 56 kilometres, off centre. And that causes the moon to be perpetually drawn towards the earth and fixed upon the earth between the north and south pole of the earth. Now as the orbit of the moon goes below the southern latitude of 25 degrees and above the northern latitude of 25 degrees in the monthly orbit, it wobbles slightly. And we on the Earth can see 51% of the Earth's uh, uh, moon surface. Now this is a harvest moon. would indicate to a uh, farmer to harvest in the Northern Hemisphere. And we are at uh, 41 degrees north at Rome. As you move south towards the equator, the uh, moon appears differently in Australia at the same latitude but south it is actually upside down because it's the uh, view of the uh, person that indicates whether you're on the top side of the earth or the other side of the earth or on the central side of the earth the equator
But no matter where you are on Earth, when the moon goes over, it's always the same way up. movement. Now there's uh, several unusual things happening at the moment. The Bill of Orion, uh, it is uh, pointing eastward and slightly north by maybe two or three degrees. Uh, that is out by about 40 degrees. Beneath the belt of Orion, which is nearly overhead right now, uh, is uh, M42. Now, M42 uh, was discovered by a man called Deparsic, Nicholas Deparsic. He used the telescope given to him by Galileo, who on the 7th of January uh, 1610 with his telescope it was about three meters long ten feet or so and uh, had a lens about uh, 12 inches which is 250 mil at the far end and uh, he charted the belt of Orion and M42 wasn't in the sheath
snow, uh, Galileo didn't see this magnificent uh, cluster. It is uh, 1600 light years from the Earth. So in 1610, uh, it indicates that it was the Star of Bethlehem, or one of them. Uh, the Star of Bethlehem was also a, an alignment between Venus and Jupiter. And over the weeks that the Magi followed them from uh, Babylon, the uh, planet Venus slowly overtook Jupiter. And at uh, 8 in the morning uh, over Bethlehem, they lined up precisely. Now that's interesting, you see the circle of the uh, moon there and it's lined up with the crater. Now, I'll go out again. It's a bit easier by doing it. And this is actually quite pathetic how we um, pull these tripods in. Now it uh, was going out and on throughout history, so Galileo didn't see it, whereas it's visible to the naked eye, a beautiful pink cluster. It's called a trapezium. There's um, four, at least four uh, stars in it that would be at least the size of the sun. And uh, suddenly this cluster, which is eight light years across, goes out, turns off, then it goes back on again. Now De Pasek, he reported it uh, to uh, other astronomers and uh, they couldn't find it. Many years later it was found again, then it went out again. Presently it's out. So I would look for it coming back on. Just note that in your little notebook that uh, it will come back on and it will be on a significant date. You can see the uh, white impact crater there is uh, almost at the 90 degree level. Also, uh, above this location, there is a star, two stars, that behaves in a very odd way. Uh, while you're looking at it, there's, uh, you can just discern the star with a smaller star at about 8 o'clock, and uh, a slight gap in between them. So as you're watching it, It'll move to the right, it'll go down, it'll move to the left, go up, go on a diagonal, go up, go down, 
does it continuously. Stars don't do this is the whole point. stars that's uh, surrounding it are just stationary like ordinary stars. So whatever these two are doing, it uh, indicates that the entire universe that you view is really uh, imaginary. The human eye can see that and you're trained to tell us you have time to get all sorts of things, but put a bullet through your head, this universe does no longer exist, you're in the spiritual realm, which is the reality. So the whole thing here is an illusion. Life is an illusion. That's why the world order and these dreadful Pot like to get this right. The only thing that works good on this particular tripod is the uh, foot pads, they're uh, nice little rubber things, and everything else is loose as crap. Okay, you see the crater is uh, quite prominent. Now the craters on the moon are circular and uh, some are 222 miles across and uh, perfectly round. This can form only when the molten ball of ejected material out through Antarctica when Mars bumped into the north pole of the Earth displacing the Earth from being 25,000 miles around, reduced by the volume of the Earth, the Moon, as it was bumped out, blasted its way out through Antarctica, forming the Arctic region. Seven mountains there. And, um, don't quote me on this, but years ago when I was doing the information on the Arctic Circle, uh, the average height was 9420 uh, feet high of the mountains and uh, the area because of areas because it's being primarily ice now a lot of people said to me either oh, if all the ice caps melt the sea level is going to come up no it doesn't take two glasses of water fill both to the brim one with ice in it and the ice, put as much ice in as you like and get the water levels exactly the same in two glasses and then wait until the uh, ice melts and you'll find that the water level doesn't go any higher because the continents float, they're like ships so if you load a ship with ice it will sink lower in the water the water doesn't get any higher, the ship gets lower. Then when you get to your port and you want to unload the ice, you do so. The ship comes back up. It makes no difference to the sea level. Because everything is floating. The continents float on the modern magma. So you'll find that everything that they uh, hype on about ice caps melting and the earth's heating up and all this nonsense the carbon tax, they've got to make money on it somehow in fact we have crossed over the Milky Way uh, line 
equatorial line and if you drain water out of your sink you'll find that the uh, water is going in the opposite direction than it was several years ago. So if you're in the northern hemisphere it'll be going opposite, it'll be now going anti-clockwise and if you're in Australia in the South Pacific it'll be going clockwise. Now if you look closely at the crater you'll see that there's a pink hue about it. That indicates that it's looking at Hebrew, which is a reddish pink colour. Now let's go and do it again, and that's it. Paul. So in other words, the light source that's hitting the, the moon's surface there, which is normally white, has got a pink glow to it. It's hard to see the slight pink glow, but uh, with a naked eye you can see it. So I look for M42 in the sheath hanging off the belt of Orion. As I say, the axis of the Earth is out by about 40 degrees. Um, and this is caused by two factors. The fact that we've gone across the equatorial line and looked at our galaxy, and also the uh, approach of the seven planets and the dwarf sun. You may pick up a bit of a pink glow to it there. See around the crater on the left there, it's light pink glow. Now the sun is just about to rise, so it's uh, almost a full moon. So when a, a moon is completely uh, white and there's no uh, crescent or white winding moon shadow, the sun is directly in line with the Earth on the other side of the Earth. Yeah. 
Just going to grab a little bit. That's how much slop there is in this thing, huh? Pathetic. Now you see that the moon has rotated slightly. It's now almost uh, equator. It's now almost 90 degrees straight out off the curvature of the moon. So uh, it's rolling, and it's rolled 90 degrees in about six hours. And you see the pink more prominent there. There I move it again. There's the uh, darker areas of the moon called the Mare and C. There's the uh, Lucifer bell chiming in the distance from the churches. The uh, entire churches of the world are all worshipping Lucifer. And because uh, most of the people have been genetically descended from the wives of Sol Solomon, the Moabites and the Ammonite out of Sodom. So, uh, if you see what's going on in MTV and that sort of thing, it is absolutely mind-blowing. It's got uh, the devil written all over it. Absolutely mind-blowing. So we go to Egypt, and uh, that's Isaiah 63. The Lord is coming from Bosra, which is the area of Sodom. Has been unable. Now here I am explaining all things as the comforter is supposed to do. Been to 11 countries in Europe. The only people I've found that believe me is the Pope and his staff in the papal office which are now murdered. The Pope is uh, resisting being murdered because of uh, who he is. He's gained immortality. And uh, that's the reason he was very sick. He was trying to kill him. But he fulfilled prophecy of uh, Revelation 17.11, being one of the seven Pope kings alive uh, in the Vatican, which is uh, 84 years old at the time of the 11th of February this year when he retired, 2013. So it was formed on the same date in uh, 1929. So we go to Egypt, to the altar, to the Lord. And that's what it's all about, the Isaiah prophecy. Here's the Lord, unable to find anybody in all of Europe, in all of the southern descendants. And uh, coming from Bosra, Sodom, it crushes the nations, the people like grapes in a wine press and uh, then liberates those who do believe in which is Egypt and Syria Palestine 
and uh, thankfully the people that are the Jewish people call themselves Jews, they're not genetically Jews, and let's get this right. Uh, they are from the Khazar descendants of Mongolia. However, they believe in the religion and they have to find their Messiah. Now, depending on the word Messiah, which language you speak, but in English it's Christ. Christos When Francis denied me, he became the first Pope to actually have been presented with proof that Christ is back on the earth, so therefore he became the Antichrist. And the Vicar of Christ is an imaginary title that was given to themselves in uh, around 1080 by this lunatic Pope that called himself the representative of God on the earth, the Vicar of Christ. And they have a value of that term in Latin of 666. So it's all nonsense. Um, to be head of a church is not to be God. These people adopted the idea. That they were God on the earth and no matter what the Pope says, that's it. Totally, totally the stupidest idea you could think of. So with that, I think we'll leave it there, I think. Hasta la vista, baby.